So welcome back to another episode, and welcome back to another episode of Games I Hate. And I've really enjoyed doing these episodes over the years. They've been very therapeutic for me because I run a show where I talk about a lot of games that I really like. So it's very nice to unload my anger and frustration into the camera, onto you guys, about games like Dynamite Motherfucking Ducks, but we're not talking about that today at all. We're just going to talk about a bunch of other games from my childhood that I didn't quite like so much. In fact, at the time, I drastically hated them, couldn't stand them, didn't want to see them, didn't want them in my fucking life. And to be honest with you, I don't own physical copies of these games because I stand by it. I didn't want them in, you know, as a part of my collection. They offended me. Can you believe it? I was offended by a video game when I was younger. And something interesting, so some of these games have become very nostalgic to me now. And even in capturing some footage for these, I was like, you know what, the game's not so bad and I'm gonna talk about the journey, sometimes from the past, into the present of liking and hating these games at the same time, but more hating them, let me tell you. So let's start off with the very first one. We have to go back to 1995, to my friend Andrew's basement. And I would always go over there, I've mentioned it many times in the show, he had all the games ahead of me, before me, he drove me crazy. But this is one game he got ahead of me that I didn't care about. I was like, I went over there one afternoon and I watched him play this game for maybe about an hour and I was like, oh, what the hell is this? I don't like this. And that game is Secret of Evermore. Now, before the pitchforks come out after me, hear me out on this one, hear me out on this one. I was coming back, you know, off of uh, Secret of Mana in 1993, a game that me and Andrew had played together, co-op, loved it, it was incredible, it was everything I could have ever wanted in an action RPG adventure uh, with your friends back then, and you know, by Squaresoft. Squaresoft could do no damage back then, they were untouchable, until Secret of Evermore for me. Because I was thinking to myself, when I was seeing it in Nintendo Powers, I was like, this is going to be a sequel to Secret of Mana. This is going to be amazing. And then, I saw the main character of the game, and I was like, what the hell is this shit? What the, like, what is this driven, you know, drawn by a juvenile? This is terrible, coming off the beautiful claymation artwork of Secret of Mana, and maybe more the anime style of artwork that I was preferring back then. And I was like, look at this terrible American-y design. I'm like, this is by Squaresoft? Well, it was Square, but it was a North American branch that made this game. And this game didn't come out in Japan. It was originally planned to. It got canceled the last minute. It came out in North America, Europe, and Australia only. And yeah, I was playing the game, I was watching Andrew play it, and I was like, they took all of the systems from Secret of Mana that I enjoyed, the combat system, the item system with the ring system, they took all of that, and I was like, I don't like the environment, I don't like the character designs, it was about a boy and his dog, they're transported into this world of Evermore by this evil scientist guy, and it's about their adventure. I didn't like the controls, I didn't like the way the game looked, I... And here's something I want to say. I was capturing footage for this game yesterday, and I was like, John of the past, you were being way too judgmental on these graphics. They're not bad, especially when we're in today's society of, you know, full polygon, 3D, your virtual reality style games at times, where this is an era of video games that I've tended over time to come back to and appreciate a little bit more the 16-bit style. And I was looking at the sprites and I was like, this is pretty good work. This is pretty good work. But the younger John hated this game. And I, I would argue with my friend Andrew. My friend, and let me say, my friend Andrew loved this game more than anything. He still will say to this day, one of his favorite childhood games and how he loved it. But for me, I was upset that I thought it was a Secret of Mana sequel. And it wasn't, it stole everything from Secret of Mana, and in my mind did this kind of like American-y botched game 
that didn't really, I, I think uh, graphically, aesthetically, wasn't what I wanted. And so I was very offended by the game, and I was, as I was playing yesterday, I'm like, man, I was being way too hard in this game, it's not, it's not that bad. And to be honest with you, thinking about my friend Andrew's love of the game, and uh, how much he enjoyed it, and how much he always ranted to me about it, his passion for it, I really, in a way, would like to have a copy of the game for that symbolization alone, but I don't think I was playing the game the other day. I'm like, yeah, it's still not for me, but you know, I understand why I hate it as a kid and I tended to appreciate it a little bit more now. Now we have to go into the Wayback Machine once again and go back to one of my favorite childhood machines of all time, the TurboGrafx-16. It was a niche system, not many people had it. Anybody in your neighborhood that had one, you were automatically best friends. And I defended the machine. I would I would fight, I swear to God, I, I would fight the Sega CD guys at school and be like, no, you know, the Turbo Graphics is so good and da-da. And there was a couple of games that I just wouldn't bring up though, that I knew weren't so hot. And why these games upset and made me angry was I had such high expectations. One of them is Vagues, and this is this is a bit of a debate how you pronounce this name. My friend Chris Bucci, who does Turbo Views, he was even trying to figure out how to pronounce it. And we ended up saying it's like Vagues, Vig, Vegas, Vegas, we think it is, or something like that. And that's Vegas Tactical Gladiator, a mech-style side view shooter on the Turbo Graphics. How could you go wrong? Where, in all the magazines, this game looked like it was going to recreate graphics, uh, you know, on the Turbo Graphics in a way I couldn't ever imagine. I was like, this is a seller, man. Because back then, and still to this day, huge mecha fan. I love anything giant robots, so this looked like it was going to be a lot of fun. Where I started playing the game, and I thought I was going to be, going to be controlling my character, and you do. But the character's always scrolling forward. You can never stop that from happening. And that was like, what? You know, I can just let go and I'm just always scrolling forward. I didn't like that. I didn't like that I didn't have control of that. Here's the other thing that I absolutely hated with this game, and I hated it capturing footage for it the other day as well. You have to hit down to turn around on the D-pad. You hit down on the D-pad to turn around. Do you know how freaking infuriating that is? Why can't I just turn left and right? No, you have to hit down. And so, even playing the game the other day, I was like, God, this is so confusing. Did I get the, the hang of it? Yes. Did I get pretty good at it? Yes. Do I still prefer this kind of like play style? Absolutely not. I hate this game. I hate it because I wanted to like it so much, and it disappointed me so much. I, it reminded me of another game on the Turbo Graphics, Bravo Man. This great superhero uh, adventure that was coming out where you can extend your arms and your legs to hit enemies. I'm like, this sounds amazing. The Turbo Graphics is a winning machine. Take that, Sega CD kids. Where I played the Turbo Chip game of this, and I was playing it the other day, and I was like, this is so average. It, it reminded me of back in the day, I didn't really feel any emotion playing it. I was like, yes, I extended my arm. Yes, I extended my leg. Yes, I killed the enemy. Yes, I moved forward. Yes, I jumped. But I feel dead inside. And that's how I felt. I felt dead inside playing this game. Those are the two Turbo Graphics games that always haunt me in a way. Because I, I really want to like them. I really wanted to say these are just, you know, fan phenomenal games on the system. And I can't. I can't lie about them. I couldn't lie about him to myself back then, and back then, I would accept a lot of shit. I played Dynamite Ducks from beginning to end, and tried to fool myself that I liked it. I, I did the same thing with these games, and I couldn't fool myself enough that I liked them, so those games are still not my favorites. Now, I thought I'd lighten this all up even more with another shitty game. And this game, quite literally, is shitty, and not because it's bad. It's, this is not because it's bad, this is a great playing, graphically fine game on the PC Engine, but it's totally, totally shitty. No pun intended, it's shitty. It's called Toilet Kids. Yes, I remember a friend of mine back in 2000 said to me, John, you gotta play this game. It's called Toilet Kids, and I'm like, what? What the hell are you talking about? He's like, yeah, I know you're a big PC Engine fan. I'm like, yeah. He's like, try it out. So I played it on emulator, first of all, and I just was shocked. 
I was like, only in Japan or Germany would they create a game like this. And it takes place, you're a boy, late at night, you're gonna go take a shit. And then all of a sudden, the toilet transports you into another world. And when you get there, you're on a toilet, using it as a weapon to destroy shitty enemies. Like really, like enemies that are turd turtles. This feels like an angry video game nerd episode. This would be perfect for James to do. He would really have a lot of fun doing this. But yeah, gold turds, you're shooting. You can shoot straight, you can drop bombs on enemies. Enemies are shooting balls of shit at you. It's not said that they're balls of shit, but the game is called Toilet Kids. You're transported into an alternate dimension by a toilet. You're driving a giant toilet, biting turd turtles and gold turds. So yeah, I think those blasts coming towards me were balls of shit. No, I, I still, I was playing this game the other day and I'm capturing footage and I'm just like, this is great. This is great. And I'm like, I gotta put this into an episode somewhere. And I thought this would be perfect. And you know what we'll call this game? We will call it a shit em up. Not a shoot em up, a shit em up. I created a new genre for one game and the game's gonna take it. Now it's funny, I brought up the AVGN a second ago, a wonderful, super awesome guy. Love his episodes, super inspirational to me 10 years ago for me doing my show. I went a different direction, I went in the happy direction. He continued to do his, his stuff, which is awesome. But I was so offended, I was so offended by an episode he did where he talked about Roger Rabbit on the NES. And I was like, oh my God, you took my thunder. Because not only did he hate the game and did an amazing episode, I give him total props for it. And I don't want to recreate that episode and do anything even remotely like that. But I just wanted to talk about my experiences with Roger Rabbit as a kid, because I was so angry. I, 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 I still hate this game. I was playing it the other day. And I was like, yes, the anger is justified. Nearly 29, 30 years later. And I've got great memories with uh, Roger Rabbit. My father taking me to see the feature length film. And I just thought it was wondrous and amazing. And back then I found out it was coming on the Nintendo. And I got super excited about it. I was like, yes, I loved it when, you know, popular franchises, I was watching on TV, or movies or whatever, were coming into a game form that I could kind of take that adventure home and have kind of an interactive experience with it. You know, like Batman was a great example by uh, Sunsoft. That was a great game. Where my excitement for Roger Rabbit was through the roof. I was like, cannot wait for this game this is gonna be absolutely amazing looking at the Nintendo powers man screenshots could do a very big disservice back then you're thinking this is gonna be the bomb and I put the game in and here's the first thing I want to talk about the music the first thing you know I, I know they have the opening music on, on, on the title screen but when you get past that and your main character standing there in your trench coat in this room and it kicks in and this song has haunted me for 30 years. I've woken up some mornings humming it in my brain and it's like torturing me. It's not like something I'm like, oh, I really like this song. Oh, I, I, I love that game so much. I hated the game. And this song for 30 years has been in my mind. And it always goes like this. It goes, and that, I, I mean, the song is insane. It's almost like a scene in a movie, like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, where you're in an insane asylum, you're all bandaged up, and you're like looking at the ceiling and that song would be playing and it'd be playing very loud. I swear to God that I hate that song. And I think why I hated the song so much is that, as I say, I'm trapped in that room and I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm walking around, I'm, I'm searching for things and I'm not finding anything. And you know, the Roger Rabbit is there and I'm like, what is he doing? Why am I not playing him? What am I doing? And then all of a sudden, I walk out into the street and I don't know where I'm going. I'm completely lost in this game world. I feel it has such lack of direction. And I was just, I would walk down the street, I'd get run over by a car, or I'd walk into a new building and I'd get instantly killed. I'm like, yeah, you can put the blame on the kid in 1988 
playing this game, that I didn't know what I was doing. That's totally fine, I'll take the blame. I don't give a shit, I'm man enough to accept that responsibility. But I was playing it the other day and I'm like, this game is a fucking load of shit, and it still is a load of shit. And I really wanted to have, you know, that Roger Rabbit experience at home and enjoy it and have a lot of fun. And this game gave me everything but fun. Everything but fun. And that's why I absolutely, the game offends me in every single regard. But there I was again the other night up on eBay looking for mint box copies for the nostalgia factor even of a game that fucking spit in my face and gave me a song that took me to an insane asylum in my mind. <laughs> that's, that's how crazy some of this stuff is and some of the great memories you get with video games over the years. Even the really terrible ones that you, you hate, you're like, this game is the worst thing in the world. There, I've always taken it and said that you can take some fun about that with you. Especially for me being, you know, like nearly 30 years ago with some of these games, I'm still laughing about them. 30 years later, and I'm making an episode now on the internet about it. It's Life has gotten absolutely ridiculous, and I just want to come in and share some games I hate from my childhood, and I've learned to, to live with some of them now kind of comfortably, some of them not so much. So anyways, guys, until next time.